Introduction to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Network Hi, I understand that to launch a compute instance, I need to set up a VCN. Can you tell me more about it? Yes, that's right. You need to set up at least one virtual cloud network, VCN, with at least one subnet before you can launch an Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Compute Instance. When you launch an instance, you are required to provide the VCN and subnet details. In principle, the VCN is your virtual data center in the cloud. It is a private network that you set up in the Oracle data centers with firewall rules, routing policies, and specific types of communication gateways. A VCN covers a single contiguous IPv4 CIDR block of your choice. So what are the components of the VCN? The typical VCN components are subnets, internet gateway, dynamic routing gateway, DRG, route tables, security lists, DHCP options. When you create a VCN, most of these components are created by default. You cannot delete them, but you can change their contents or create more of each kind of component. Remember, after you've created a VCN or subnet, you can't change its size. Be sure to think about the address ranges and size of VCN and subnets you need before creating them. That is an important consideration. Are there any other limits to size and address ranges? For a VCN, you can use any IPv4 address range of size, slash 16 to slash 30. Within a subnet's address range, the service reserves the first two IP addresses and the last one. How exactly is the VCN connected to my on-premises network? There are two ways to connect your on-premises network to your VCN. IPsec VPN offers redundant IPsec tunnels between your network's edge router and the DRG that you create and attach to your VCN. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Fast Connect offers a private connection between your network's edge router and your DRG. Traffic does not traverse the Internet. How is an IP address assigned to my compute instance? Good question. Let us first understand the two IP address types, public IP address and private IP address. A public IP address is an Internet routable IP address. An instance in your VCN communicates with hosts on the Internet via a public IP address. A private IP address is not Internet routable. Instances inside the VCN communicate with each other using private IP addresses ensuring strong isolation. Private IP address. Every compute instance is assigned a private IP address from the CIDR block of the subnet the instance is launched in. Optionally, you can specify a particular private IP address of your choice from the subnet's available pool. Public IP address. If your compute instance is created in a public subnet, it will be assigned a public, internet-routable IP address by default. You can override that behavior during instance launch and request to have no public IP address assigned. Can you tell me about the VCN setup and functionality? There are three ways that the VCN can be set up. VCN with public subnets, VCN with private subnets with connectivity to on-premises network, and VCN with a combination of public and private subnets with connectivity to on-premises network. Let us look at an example of the third scenario where the VCN is set up with both public and private subnets. To use this scenario, you must have a network administrator configure the router at your end of the IPsec VPN. In this scenario, you set up a VCN with 1. Both a public subnet and a private subnet in a single availability domain. 2. Similar subnets in a second availability domain for redundancy. 3. An Internet gateway so the instances in the public subnets can communicate with the Internet using their public IP addresses. 4. An IPsec VPN so the instances in the private subnets 
can communicate securely with your on-premises network using their private IP addresses. 5. Two route tables to direct traffic out of the VCN, one for traffic to the Internet and one for traffic to your on-premises network. 6. A modified default security list, where you change all the existing stateful ingress rules to allow traffic only from your on-premises network's CIDR block. 7. A separate security list just for the public subnets with these rules. Stateful ingress rule for traffic from anywhere on TCP ports 80 HTTP and 443 HTTPS. Stateful egress rule for any traffic to the private subnets on TCP port 1521 for Oracle databases. 8. A separate security list just for the private subnets with these rules. Stateful ingress rule for any traffic from the public subnets on TCP port 1521 for Oracle databases. Stateful ingress rule for any traffic from the private subnets on TCP port 1521 for Oracle databases. Stateful egress rule for any traffic in the private subnets on TCP port 1521 for Oracle databases. 9. The default set of DHCP options. Notice that the public subnet would use both the default security list and the public subnet security list. Likewise, the private subnet would use both the default security list and the private subnet security list. The default security list contains a core set of stateful rules that all subnets in the scenario need to use. And by the way, each subnet can be assigned up to five security lists. How do I secure my compute instance running inside my VCN? You can secure your compute instance by using security lists, each of which contains a set of ingress and egress security rules. A security rule is similar to a firewall rule, where you can specify the source or destination address range, protocol, and port. All traffic to and from an instance is rejected by default unless it matches the attributes of one of security rules in the subnet security lists. Note that each subnet can be assigned up to five security lists. That was a very exhaustive overview. Can we now try setting up a VCN? Sure. Using the VCN setup wizard, we can do it in minutes. Log in to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Portal. In the console, Click Networking. Choose Virtual Cloud Network under Networking. Note that you can create a VCN only within a predefined compartment. You will need to create a new compartment or choose from compartments that you have created earlier. By default, the VCN setup is routed to the compartment that I had created earlier. Name your VCN in the Setup Wizard. It is optional though. You can choose to either create the VCN components manually or go with the default components. Let's choose the default components and click Create VCN plus Related Resources. The dialog expands to list the items that will be created with your cloud network. Accept other defaults and click Create Virtual Cloud Network. A confirmation page displays the details of the cloud network that was just created. The cloud network has the following resources and characteristics. CIDR block range of 10.0.0.0 slash 24. An internet gateway. A route table with a default route rule to enable traffic to and from the internet gateway a default security list, a public subnet in each availability domain. The VCN will automatically use the Internet and VCN Resolver for DNS. That was quick and easy. What else can I do with my VCN? As we discussed earlier, a VCN is your virtual data center in the cloud. You can implement custom network topologies to replicate your on-premises environment 
using advanced primitives like virtual network interfaces, IP addresses, routing controls, and gateways. You can find more information about these features and the topologies you can achieve in our documentation. To learn more, please go to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Portal. You can sign up for a free trial and get started right away.